is our carabiner pin that we've been working on and at this point it consists of three parts. Uh, it consists of the first part we made which was the tip which we made with a revolve and everything that went into making that tip is contained in this folder here. I'm going to show you how to use folders to organize all the steps here and it works great thanks to a student of mine who pointed this out to me. So every step here I've renamed as to being associated with the tip and then I put it into its own folder. Same for the grip which I can turn on here and also um, the body here you can see there's quite a few steps 12 for the body and then the threads for the body and the ellipse for the body uh, which I separate out somewhat arbitrarily so I want to show you how to make this part and organize things as I learned quite a lot and I hope you will as well. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete everything after uh, making the grip. So here we are starting fresh and we want to make the body. <clears throat> First thing we're going to do is we're going to place a sketch on this ledge here. Okay, right there. And we want that to be um, In the dimensions, what do I have for that? Well, I have to go back here and look at dimensions. So, according to my calculations or my measurements, it was 0.667 inches, but I want that to be 0.601 so that it matches up with the existing size of the tip. So, that's a small change I'm going to make. Um, and we'll see how that, that should be okay. So, that circle. I could do a couple things, right? I could press use, use that circle, and let's just see how big it is, 0.601. I think I'll do that. All right, so let's finish that, and we've got a sketch there, and if we turn everything off, in terms of visibility, you can see that we've got this circle, as we might if we were just using a bottoms up design, uh, as we start to make the body. But we can turn these on and we can see that, you know, it's in context, even though it doesn't really show up there. Yeah, it's hard to get it to show up. It is right there and we're going to use it. Okay, so I'm going to rename this one. Uh, sketch dash bottom of body. So I can refer to that. Okay. Next thing I want to do is I want to put a plane above that sketch so that I can loft to it. So I'm going to click plane here and then zoom up, make sure I don't get the edge, but get the face. So I'll click there. I should have a, a plane up here, as you can see. And that distance uh, should be 1.450 inches. So let me change that to 1.45. Okay, so I've got a uh, plane up there. And what that is going to be is the midpoint of the the pin. So you can see that uh, we come up here to a maximum diameter and then we get a little smaller again. So we're going to do a loft in this region here, region 1, and then loft another loft, region 2, and take us to the very top. Okay. So I just made the midpoint plane. So I'll rename that. It's a plane dash midpoint of body. Now on that plane, I want to draw a larger diameter circle, which is going to represent um, this diameter here. Okay, and you can see that it's 0 0.720 inches. So that circle, where is it? I didn't place it on there, so press N to go normal to the your view. We're going to place a circle coincident with the center, come out, 0 0.72, 0 0.72, enter. And we'll take that. Okay, so this is what we have. And again, if I turn off the existing parts, I've just got these two circles that I want to loft from one to the other. Let's see how that works. Well, what I would normally do is uh, hit loft and then come down and try to grab that sketch and by the way I'm gonna stop for a minute and I'm gonna rename that 
sketch the midpoint of body. Okay. So if I hit loft here and try to go and grab sketch bottom of body, which is that circle here, you can see I'm going to pick up a lot of other stuff. And there may be tricks on how to avoid this. Uh, let me just do it and show you. So that's the first, that's the second, and then the loft doesn't like that. So what I found works is if you use the loft and you pick it in the feature list. So the first sketch I want is the bottom of the body. And then the second one I want is the midpoint of the body. There it goes. And notice up here I have add rather than new. So this is going to be a new part. All right. So the takeaway is that in order to select the geometry I want for the loft command, I had to select it over here in the feature list. Otherwise it got corrupted. I couldn't separate out the geometry I want. All right, so there we go. So that didn't work. Why didn't that work? Well, because I want you to re forget everything you said. So notice up here that I want to have new here rather than add. So I'm going to click there. Turns a different color, indicating it's a different part, and you have the third part there. So yeah, the opposite of what I originally said. Okay, so there's the first part of the uh, body. So I'm going to right click here, rename this body, and then subsequent lofts and extrusions are going to be additions to this part, the body. Okay, so I'm going to rename this one and call it loft uh, lower body. Now I'm ready to start on the top part, which would be this area here. Okay. So um, I'm going to hold off in grouping these, and, I'm, and so give me a moment. So I'm going to uh, let's see, put a sketch on on this plane here. And N, then the circle. I think I'm going to have that sketch. I'm just going to use that circle. And that circle I know is 0.72. Okay, rather than redraw it. So I'm going to use that. So this sketch is now named uh, Midpoint of Body. I've already got one called Midpoint. No, I don't. That's the plane. So this will be the sketch. No, I do midpoint of body. Actually, I don't need to make a new sketch. Let me delete that sketch. So I can just use this sketch, midpoint of body. I don't have to make a new one. That's right. So what I'm going to do is have an offset plane here. So I click plane, offset, and that distance is 0 0.975. 0 0.975. Take that. And here is where I want to put the new sketch, right here. And I want it to be coincident with the origin, and its diameter is going to be 0 0.522. 0 0.522. Enter. Accept that. All right. And now, evidently it's uncluttered enough such that I can just loft directly there, but I want to rename some of these things. So rename. This is going to be the plane for the top of body. The sketch here is going to be renamed as top of body. Okay. Now I'm going to loft from, see how naming them helps? Uh, the midpoint of body, the sketch there, and I'm going to go up to the top of body right there. I'm going to make sure this says add here instead of new and accept it. You can see that I've got, let me erase some of this stuff. I'm getting pretty close to being finished. I've got the, uh, the parts that are right here, all this, you know, minus the ellipses and the shelling. So now I just need to make these two uh, extrusions, okay? So now I'm going to do a little uh, housekeeping. I try to do this as we're going. So this loft actually is the upper body loft. Okay. 
So I am going, okay, I'm not quite done with the body, but normally I would have grouped some of these. Uh, but this is like 10 steps long, so it's very long. Again, I'm going to have a group called just the body, or a folder called just the body, like I do up here for the, all these other quantities. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, these are pretty easy, right? We just put a sketch here, make it normal to you, and then the diameter of our... Okay, once again, I need to erase a little bit. What we're looking for in terms of diameter is uh, this one right here. So that little threaded boss, something that stands above a surface is called a boss, B-O-S-S, B-O-S-S. -S. And so we're going to call that the threaded boss on the, uh, on the body. So that has a diameter of 0.378 and it goes up, or uh, extrusion size of 0.158. So 0.378 is the diameter. So we'll come here. Never did place it. Oh well. 0 0.378. 0.378. Enter. Okay. There it is. And that's an easy one. We just extrude this out. 0.158 right there. 0.158. Enter. Accept that. And then we'll put another sketch right here. And it's going to be, uh, its diameter is 0.255. And so we can accept that and then extrude up here a distance 0.117. Okay. So I've gotten ahead of myself by not naming a lot of this stuff. So this sketch here is going to be uh, uh, it's going to be the threaded boss on body. And the extrusion here is going to be extrusion of the threaded. I know it's not threaded yet, but it will be. Finally, this will be a sketch which is the top boss on body. And rename top boss on body. So at this point, I've got, uh, I've got it made, the, the, the general part of the body. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm, uh, I'm going to shell it and then I'm going to stop there and continue on in another video with the remainder of this. Um, and so before I do that, what I want to do is turn off the tip and the grip so I can isolate the, uh, the body and I want to shell uh, at to 0.025. 25, enter. And uh, we've got it there. Okay, so that is, we'll call that the body. And so what I would do now is I would rename this, of course, to shell of the body. And what I can do is, is click here and then go up to the top, shift, click, and select all those features. Click the uh, folder, and I'm going to put in body. And you can see how that cleaned up. So I can go back in here anytime I want and say I want to turn off these unsightly planes, like so, I can do that. But as I'm working further, I can see exactly where everything is. You can see that uh, the body is here, and then I'm going to start now to put the threads here, and then also the features, the elliptical uh, extrusions around here that accommodate the handles for the color of the ink. So there we go. So the big takeaway is use the feature list and the folder feature of the feature list, and also occasionally you'll need to select geometry from the feature list. Thanks for watching.